your hand so the people standing in the back can find a seat. We'll start in just a minute. So thank you everybody for coming today. It's a big crowd. Um, so I'm just gonna briefly walk through how we're going to operate the meeting today. So Lauren Langer is our um, assistant city attorney. Lauren is going to walk through a brief PowerPoint kind of outline, outlining the waiting criteria that we posted on the city's website last week. Um, then we're going to call speakers up to ask one question each. If there are additional, if there is additional time, we will allow people to come up and ask additional questions. You can always submit questions to us um, online as well at our email address, which is cannabis at weho.org. We're asking everybody to come up to the podium to ask their questions because this is being filmed and live streamed. And so we won't be able to hear your question if you don't come up. So with that, I thank everybody for coming. We're looking forward to receiving your applications and looking forward to getting lots of cannabis businesses in the city. Thank you. Okay, thank you all for coming out today. We're working on the air conditioning. Hopefully everybody got a seat. Um, I just wanted to let you all know we're very excited to finally have the application out, the screening criteria out. The city staff has worked so hard to get to this point with perfecting the ordinance and the screening criteria in the application. So, but you know, with that, this is a brand new process, and so we're you know working through a lot of issues, and we're sure, we're sure that you all have a lot of questions. So we wanted to have an opportunity to present what was posted on the website the other day, and allow you to ask questions before the screening period starts. So everybody's operating off of all the same information, and can begin working on their applications um, with all of their questions answered. So. Here's what we're gonna do quickly before we get to questions. We're gonna review the screening application highlights. We're gonna re review the waiting criteria. Then I'm gonna answer some questions that we received via email before the meeting, and then we'll open it up um, to the public question period. We've accepted speaker slips. If you've just arrived, please submit a speaker slip. We're gonna ask that you limit your questions to one question per person because we have a lot of people wanting to ask questions and if there's time at the end, we'll let you line up again and, and ask a second question. And if you've heard your question be answered, let's think of another one. Okay, so a little bit of background. As all of you know, um, back in November, the city council authorized the following cannabis business licenses. Eight adult use retail, eight consumption area that's smoking, vaping, and ingesting, eight consumption area licenses that's ingestion only, eight medical use dispensaries, and eight delivery services. Now for those of you that haven't been paying close, close attention to the city's process, um, the city council reviewed some updates to that ordinance just last week on April 2nd. So if you don't have the most recent version of the ordinance, you can go to the city's website and get it, and I'm sure we'll post it on our cannabis webpage. Um, but that was reviewed last Monday night on April 2nd. It clarified a few things from the original ordinance that we thought were important to get clarified before you all start preparing your applications. For example, we clarified that medical patients can be delivery customers, that um, as long as you're 18 and a patient. Um, we clarified in the ordinance that consumption lounges can be indoors um, because of odor concerns and, and whatever else. Oh. Smoking at consumption lounges can be indoors. Um, 
consumption lounges can have ancillary cultivation um, and that food infused with cannabis can be prepared on site. Um, so those were the substantive clarifications that were made last week. And what remained the same in the application or in the ordinance was the merit-based application process with a couple of, of cleanups to sort of reflect more how this is gonna go. So let's talk about that application process quickly. Last week, staff posted draft application and draft screening criteria. I strongly urge you to read the screening application word for word. There is so much information in there and explains a lot of this really well. So if you haven't done it already, please read that application because it'll answer a lot of your questions. So we're having this meeting today. Next week, uh, the week of the 16th, we are gonna finalize the waiting criteria and the application and post them. Then you're gonna have from May 2nd to May 31st to prepare and submit your applications. After that, we are gonna have our independent scoring committee review and score the applications. We can't tell you how long that process is gonna be because it depends how many applications we receive. If we only receive 10 applications, which is unlikely given the crowd in this room, um, it would happen very fast. But if we receive you know, over 100 applications, it, it could take some time. So we're anticipating that that will happen over the summer. And then at the end of the summer, beginning of fall, the screening um, process will have finished. Uh, the top scores in each category will be announced. And at that point, those top, those who score the highest in each category, the top eight, will be required to secure a location. And then for those of you that don't speak Lanning and Planned Use Talk, or Planning and Land Use Talk, you're gonna have to get a zone clearance. And that means that you go to the city's planning counter and you get a permit that says this use is allowed at this location. It's not a permit to operate, it doesn't, um, it just says that under the zoning, this location is okay. So you have your, you, you're the top eight scorer, you get your zone clearance, and then at that point, you will be scheduled for a hearing before the city's business license commission. Um, we assume that that will happen sometime in the fall. Once you get your business license from the business license commission, at that point, you might still need to get more permits from the planning department. If you're doing tenant improvements or you're building a new building, anything um, that requires a building or planning permit, you still have to do that after your business license commission hearing. So that's kind of how the process will go. If you have any questions about that, we'll be ha happy to answer them after that. So let's talk about the screening application for a moment. The required components are a completed applicant owner information form and a cover letter. Um, one cover letter can cover your multiple license applications. So you're gonna wanna explain in your cover letter all the, th all the different licenses you're applying for in this application. Um, these are not gonna be counted in your 50 pages. So these are at the front of your application. Okay, here's something that's really important and we'll talk about it a little bit more in a few minutes. Proof of payment for screening application fee. We need a receipt that you paid you for your screening application as part of your application submittal. And don't wait to pay because you're gonna need to present that, um, that receipt. And then we're gonna go through um, the detail of your business plan and concept. There's four parts to it, which we'll talk about in more depth in a second, but there's a business plan, a design concept, a security plan, and an experience section. So just a few more things about the application generally. 75 pages total for each license type. 50 pages of those can be text and you can have an additional 25 pages of images. You can use 11 point font, nothing smaller because every, you know, everyone's gotta fit it into 50 pages. Standard paper size, 8.5 by 11. The submittal period is May 2nd through May 31st. No exceptions. We're gonna use a, a system called Planet Bids, which is something that the city has used a lot for various um, public bidding. And so 
you need to register for that site and become familiar with that site as soon as possible because if you're having problems uploading on May 31st at 11.45, it's gonna be a big problem. We're, there's gonna be no exceptions to the time limit. So you have to have your application uploaded to the site by midnight on May 31st. I highly recommend that you upload it early and that you familiarize yourself with the site before May 31st. Today is a venue for asking questions and we hope to get as many questions answered as we possibly can. If you ask something that, that we can't answer today, we're gonna post the answers to the city's cannabis website. Um, in addition to that, you may have questions that come up after we leave this meeting and you can email them to the city's email address which is cannabis at weho.org and we'll post responses on the website before the screening period starts. And this is important because we're not gonna accept individual questions after May 2nd because we can't, it's not fair for us to give an answer to one person and the rest of you not have access to that answer. And there's not a fair way to disseminate answers to everybody so we're gonna ask that questions that you have on this application process be submitted to the city through the email address by April 27th. Multiple applications. You can combine them into one submittal. I kind of mentioned, went over this before. There's one applicant owner form, one cover letter, and then below, you know, in, in one submittal, you're gonna include all of your packets for each license type that you're asking for. So if you're asking for adult use and consumption and delivery, you're gonna have three packets with one cover letter and one applicant um, owner form. Don't forget that there's a separate screening, screening fee for each license type. So you, when you go to pay your fee, you have to pay for each license type that you're asking for and you will submit those receipts with your submittal. No, no, that's fine, keep that up for just one second. It's not showing on my paper copy, but these are the screening application fees. The Planet Bid site does not take online payments. I know we're very used to that in today's world that you can just go onto a website and pay. Planet Bids does not take online payments, which means you need to go down to City Hall and pay at the cashier and get a receipt or mail your payment in. And if you do pay your fee by mail, you have to do it early enough that you get your receipt in the mail back and can submit it by May 31st. So please time this appropriately because we, we don't have any exceptions for any late submittals. The fee has to be paid before you submit. Okay, just a couple last application pieces of application information. The City Council discussed this at a meeting a few months ago and adopted a practice that applicants are prohibited from contacting the Screening Evaluation Committee and the Business License Commissioners about their application. So please note that you are, you are not allowed to reach out to the Screening Committee members or the Business License Commissioners to talk about your application. Multiple application licenses can be requested. As I mentioned before, you can request delivery, adult use, medical, and consumption. Um, so you can have multiple licenses, multiple, okay, so you can have multiple license types. You cannot apply for more than one of the same license type. So we don't want one company coming in and asking for four of the adult use licenses. We want a broad range of businesses, so one, license type per applicant. Licenses are not, oh, but you can have multiple licenses in one location. That's probably apparent. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but we have been getting some questions about whether or not licenses are transferable. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on it because it's not really relevant to the application process today. Because here, you know, we're asking you as applicants and operators to tell us about yourself and then your, your applications will be um, granted or not. Um, we understand that sometime in the future, there may be a change in your business structure or a partner may leave a partnership and those things happen. And we have provisions in our business license ordinance to address that and they're not cannabis specific, they apply to every business in the city. So if you're worried about that happening in the future, 
we'll deal with it in the future. Um, today, I don't really want to spend a lot of time answering questions about transferability of, of these licenses because they're granted to you as the operator who's applying and they're not transferable. Um, one last thing that we haven't uh, noted for the public before, there's four existing medical um, dispensaries in town and they are not required under the ordinance to go through the screening process but if you are one of the four existing medical locations, you need to let us know by May 31st if you intend to keep that license um, because that will tell us how many available licenses there are through the screening process. So if you're one of the four, please reach out to Jeff Abel and let him know um, if you're intending to maintain status as a medical location and you can process your new uh, business license for that. And if not, we will have more than four medical licenses available. So we'll know that when the screening process starts. Okay, the application waiting criteria. Let me find that. We've been getting a lot of questions about what the city wants to see, what's the best thing to submit, and we can't really ask that, but we can't really answer that for you. Um, staff has put together an incredibly detailed screening criteria with all the weights that explains every piece um, that your application is gonna be scored on. So if you look in this, you'll see everything that you're required to submit. We can't tell you whether one piece of information is more valuable than, an, than another. You have to decide that for yourself. But think about it this way. You wanna put your best information forward that explains your business, your business plan, that you can be a responsible, unique, and successful operator in the city. Your applications are gonna be reviewed by an independent committee that doesn't know you. So whatever information you want them to know about your business, put it in there. Put, use your best judgment and put the best information um, that you can. So as I mentioned before, the screening criteria is broken down into four parts. And those four parts are intended to relate back to the section of the ordinance that talks about the general criteria that the applications are gonna be weighted on. So the first big criteria is your business plan. It's, it, it's in a matrix, it shows how many weighted points are eligible for each criteria for each license type. And for the business plan, the city wants to know about your unique business model and if you have a marketing plan and your connection to West Hollywood community engagement, whether you have any engagement with nonprofits, community events, um, your, how you can incorporate West Hollywood's core values into your business. These are things that are all explained in there and that's how you're gonna explain your innovative business model and your connection to the city. The next piece of the business operations plan is all about your operations your standard operating procedures, your financial plan, whether or not you're an environmentally conscious business, your software, your track and trace program, how you're gonna uh, train your employees. All of those details need to be included in your application. The next piece is the social equity piece. You might wanna flip, let's see. There you go, okay is the social equity piece. This is asking about your hiring practices, your compensation package, whether you're using small cannabis producers, um, economic inclusion, and any non-discrimination policy that you have. Um, I wanna mention one thing about social equity because it's come up a lot in the city's public meetings. And as you'll see here, social equity is one one specific weighted criteria, but it's also sort of just built into all of the criteria um, because the city is looking for the best business that fits in this city and all of, the, all of the criteria can consider that information. Another piece of this that relates to social equity is the fact that the city doesn't require um, app screening applicants to have secured a physical location before you apply. And this is something that was very intentional when the city was coming up with how to, how to do this ordinance. And it sort of leveled the playing field so everybody would be able to apply and it sort of um, 
creates a level playing field and an equitable process for everybody because certain people might have more more money and resources at their dis at their disposal to be able to secure a location now others might not be able to do it till later so that's another piece that's just built into this process because we wanted to create a fair playing field for everybody so after the social equity um, there's a section on product offerings sorry it's kind of hard to <laughs> see this here Product procurement, what's your procurement plan? Are you using natural products that don't use pesticides or chemicals? Um, and are you using environmentally conscious cultivators? These are, you know, these are all things that deal with West Hollywood's core values and it's a way for the, for the city to, to understand the type of business that you're gonna be. The next one, um, design concept. A lot of people are asking questions about this design concept, especially because you may not have secured a physical location yet. But this isn't about putting forth a specific design for one specific storefront. This is about your concept and your materials and your aesthetic and your overall vision for the business that you want to put forward. And I think everybody understands that that may need to be adapted when you do secure a physical location, but this is more about concept and aesthetics and, and the feel of your business and how it's going to look. So those criteria are all listed as well. The third part of the application is the security plan, and this is a pretty detailed part as well. It's looking at the, uh, qu the quality of the plan, your cash management plan, your employee safety education, whether you have experience with security and deliveries, your the quality of your security guards, your video camera surveillance, all those things you need to think about in advance for how you're gonna have a safe operation. And then lastly, the fourth piece is an experience piece. And I don't know if you have the criteria in front of you, but it's kind of broken down into two pieces. The first piece are points awarded in one experience category. And that depends on how long uh, you've had experience in either the cannabis industry or any similarly state regulated industry. So if you have experience in something that's not cannabis, but highly regulated and you're used to figuring out compliance with state law and dealing with state agencies. That, that's relevant experience that we want to know about. Uh, we've received a couple comments and questions about what the term majority owner means and because that was so um, confusing to everybody, we're gonna, one thing I can tell you that we're going to revise before this is finalized is change majority owner to applicant. We want to know about the applicant's experience. And these are all going to match state law definitions. One thing we want through this process is we want the applicants for the local license to be the same applicants that are applying for the state license. So those two, those two individuals, entities, all need to match up. And so we're going to try and make that a little more clear in the screening criteria and take out that term majority owner. Um, then below that, it looks at restaurant and bar experience. But if you look at the scoring criteria, there's only points available for a consumption area. So you have to, you know, be, you have to look both horizontally and vertically to see, see which points are available. This is the place where you talk about your cannabis industry knowledge and your ownership team. The city wants to know if these are gonna be absentee owners or if the owners um, are going to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations of this business. And the last piece is whether you're an existing cannabis business. Finally, there's a section five, which is overall quality. And this looks at the quality and thoroughness of the application materials. Overall, there's 200 points that are part of this screening application and they're gonna be averaged. The screening committee is five individuals and the scores will be averaged, so we'll most of that's already in the ordinance. Um, let's see. We received some questions in advance, and I'm gonna try and answer those to the extent I can see them in the dark. And then what we'll do is we'll call up individuals who submitted speaker slips to come up, ask their one question, We'll get through all the speaker, uh, speaker cards. We ask that you keep your questions to under a minute because there's a lot of people in this room and you probably have a lot of questions. 
Um, and we will go from there. So, let's see. Somebody asked, can you elaborate on the detail of the marketing plan? Are you asking for an actual plan or are you asking for the type of plan we would create? As I mentioned before, we, we can't tell you exactly what to submit, but the more detail you provide, the better. The more you can explain how you're gonna operate, the better to inform these, um, the, the screening committee ab about your business. There was a question um, under the business plan for the operations plan, what it means by tenant improvements. And if you don't have a building, why would you have to talk about your funding for the tenant improvements? And that is under the financial information. And for whoever had this question, that was just an example of something that you want to prove that you have access to funding for. All of the financial information is under subsection 1C operations. Um, and they're asking for your financial plan to start the business, which could include you're going to need to have money to do improvements, employee costs, legal costs, consultant costs. So you don't. So tenant improvements is just an example of something that you're going to want to show. Um, there's also demonstration of funding availability to, uh, to achieve your financial plan and how you're going to fund your ongoing operations. So that's the kind of information that they want to see under the business plan. There was a question, um, how come a delivery service cannot also offer medical cannabis discounts. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, the ordinance was clarified such that um, medical patients can be delivery customers. So hopefully that, that addresses that question. Under security plan, somebody asked, is the city wanting to hold us to which specific armored car service we will use, or do you just want to know that we will be using a qualified one? We just want to know you'll be using a qualified armored car service. You don't have to have that contract worked out beforehand. We got some questions about the majority owner. As I mentioned, we're going to take that term out. Somebody asked, does having a location identified for the screening process have any bearing whatsoever on the application? No. As we finalize negotiations for our commercial property and plan our build out, we were wondering if you have an estimated timeline for finding out about the winning applicants. As I mentioned earlier, no, because it's going to depend on how many applications we receive, so we can't really anticipate how long the screening process is going to go. Um, somebody asked, there was a change to the ordinance that allows the on-site production of cannabis-infused items um, to be a source of products as a consumption lounge and what that means and how that comports with state law. That language was added to the ordinance to just to provide maximum flexibility to consumption lounges to make it clear that if you're intending to provide food, that you can make the food on site. It's not intending to serve as a manufacturing because that's not something that's um, necessarily allowed at cannabis consumption lounges, but you can make your cannabis-infused food at a consumption lounge. There was a question about um, whether the cover, lever, cover letter is included in the 50 pages. I think I covered that earlier. The cover letter and the applicant information form is not included in your 50 pages. Are licensed medical and adult use retailers allowed to deliver to their members and customers without applying for a separate delivery license? No. If you intend to deliver, you have to apply for a delivery license. Okay. That's those. We got a few more, and then we will get to your specific questions. Somebody asked about the community engagement plan with nonprofits. They said, many nonprofits receive federal funding and are currently unable to accept contributions that have a cash equivalent value from cannabis businesses under federal law. Aside from volunteer work with nonprofits, are there other means of engagement that the city has in mind that would not jeopardize nonprofit federal subsidization? And that's from the, um, where we want to hear about your plans for community engagement. It was not intended to be any cash donations to nonprofits. We just want to know 
if you're involved in any local events, if you do food drives or volunteer in any way, that's the type of information. It does not have to be um, a cash donation to any local nonprofit. Somebody asked another question about the demonstration of the funding plan. In an industry that has no shortage of interested investors, is there a specific type of funding that is preferred for the allocation of points for the application? No. Will a referral list demonstrating past secured funding for multiple successful businesses suffice, or is it a balance sheet demonstrating financial wherewithal preferable? Again, we can't tell you what type of information to provide, but you want to put your best, most informative information forward so that the independent screening committee knows about your business and, and can rank you accordingly. They want to know that you're going to be a successful, unique, responsible business, and so you have to use your best judgment to know what to submit, and we can't answer individual questions um, to tell you which piece of information is better or will get you more points. Um, it's going to be screened by an independent committee once they have all those applications. Can you provide some clarity to the ability to demonstrate product offerings and cannabis strains? How specifically would this be demonstrated in application and how are points awarded for this? This is another thing. We can't tell you exactly what to provide, but I think the question is intended to find out if you believe in your products and if you've done due, due diligence to find um, special, unique products that you use responsible cultivators, whatever it is, they want to know those types of things, but we can't tell you exactly what kind of um, information to provide. This person also asked, is there an area in which we should demonstrate and outline our safe handling and testing, or is this question more related to botanical acumen and product knowledge? I think the ability to demonstrate product offerings is asking about your botanical acumen and product knowledge not about safe handling. Is there an area where points are awarded on the application for demonstrating a relationship with a proven supply chain with a pristine record? Yes. And then the last pre-submitted question was about whether or not you can have a DJ at a cannabis consumption lounge. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the answer is yes, but it's not it's not relevant to this business operation screening plan. Um, if you, <laughs> there'll be fun places, I'm sure. If you receive a cannabis consumption lounge permit, you can go to the city to get an entertainment license. So that will be sort of, I, I was mentioning before that once you get your business license, you may have to get building and planning permits. That could be another type of permit that after you as an operator are licensed in the city that you could get to, um, to get all the permits you need for the type of business that you want to operate. So with that, we have speaker cards. And John is going to call up the names. Please come up to the podium. You can ask the questions. As I mentioned, we'll try to answer them to the best we can. If it's not possible to answer today, we will post the answers on the website before um, the screening period starts. Um, we at, please keep your questions to one, under a minute, and if there's time at the end, once we get through the list, we'll allow you to line up again and ask a second question, but let's try and make sure that everybody gets an opportunity to ask a question. So our first question is from Mark Lehman, followed by Steve Sukman. It's a nice surprise. Hi, Mark Lehman, City uh -huh. West Hollywood. Uh, my question was really about the screening process itself, and uh, we have various sections of the application. Are, is each screener going to screen every application, or are they going to be split up so just arguably there's 100 applications, 20 go to the first one, another 20 to the second? Uh, that, that was my question. Is it broken up? No. Uh, so each, each one will review Every application. Every application. Part of my question was you've got expertise areas. You've got a question on design. Maybe there's only one person on the panel who really has design experience. So that's why I was asking that particular question. So the, each person is going to review every single application. Thing. Okay. And they all bring different experience to the table. And so it'll be okay. it's a well Thank you. thought out panel. Uh, next is Steve Sukman, followed by Carla Isa. Oh, good afternoon. 
I know you didn't want to discuss license transferability, but I'm going to try and bring it up real quickly. As you're probably aware, capital formation is extremely complex mm -hmm. when you're building a cannabis operation, especially if it's on-site consumption in West Hollywood where the costs are very high. So with a view towards the fact that a company may be organized in one format and be required just by nature of the award of a license, to go through some pretty radical gyrations. How is the city prepared to entertain that as we amass the required funding to build an open, pretty spectacular space here in West Hollywood? Mm. As I mentioned before, the, in the city's business license ordinance, there is an entire section that applies to every business on different types of internal transform, uh, transfers and changes and partnership with different percentages, and we can show you that code section. I don't have it at the ready. Um, Jeff might know it off the top of his head, but it's something that we can answer on a case-by-case -case basis as it comes up with respect to specific, the specific details of, of your business. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Next is Carla Isa, followed by Sherry Franklin. <coughs> Carla, okay, Sherry Franklin to be followed by Jean Cisneros. Hi, Cherie Franklin, Cannabis of Los Angeles. Regarding the question regarding um, uh, the purchase of product from counties that have income levels below state average, I wanted to know if it was the entire county, because that may not be the county of Los Angeles, or portions of the county, because we certainly want to include uh, communities within, uh, you know, our, our county here. I'm going to toss that question over to John Leonard. So we can look into that. Originally, when that question was drafted, it was for an entire county. Mm -hmm. um, but I understand the point about Los Angeles County or counties with a lot of different specific cities and communities. When we were formulating that question, we were thinking more of some of the rural counties where there aren't necessarily as many cities and it's the county, but so we'll take a look at that. Jean Cisneros, followed by Andy Birnbaum. Hi, I uh, wanted to find out after you get selected, whoever gets selected, how much time do you have to procure the property? A year. One year. I mean, you have, to, you have to have your business license be through the process within 12 months, and that's in the ordinance. Okay, so, you, so once you get that business license and the zoning review cleared... You have to have a location to get your zoning oh. clearance. So you have, once, you get, once you receive your um, notification that you're one of the top eight, okay. you have to procure a license, and you'll, you'll maintain that status of top eight for, for a year. year. Okay, cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Andy Birnbaum, followed by Danny Shaker. Hi, Andy Birnbaum, West Hollywood. Thank you for holding the forum. And I just had a bit of a follow-up question regarding the community and nonprofit engagement criteria. Does it need to be something that's currently happening? Can it include things that happened in the past? And can it include a plan for future involvement? And relatedly, if you have an existing location in another city, can you talk about the contributions you're making there? I'm also going to turn it over to you. I think all of that would be applicable. Certainly, if you have a location in another city, um, we, we would be interested in hearing the type of engagement you're, that's taking place in that city. But I think it would also be important to provide examples of the type of things you would do in West Hollywood. But showing experience in other cities, I think, would be helpful. Yeah. Thank you. I'll just oh. follow up on the, the, the criteria is connection to West Hollywood. Yes. I, I agree that things you've done in the past in other cities are perfectly relevant. But the, just so you know that the overarching criteria is to show a connection to West Hollywood and what you intend to do in the city. And, and so that could be satisfied by showing what you've done elsewhere combined with how you would do similar things here. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Danny Shaker to be followed by William Whitmere. Good afternoon, Danny Shaker, City of West Hollywood. Um, we've watched this process evolve and are truly um, pleased with the application and the nuances of it. So we want to commend staff and thank you for all of your hard work. Uh, my one question is, um, 
Under the application review overview, it says that the application evaluation committee members will score and total an average for each application. What does that mean, average? So there's five members. They'll each score each application, and then each score will be averaged Perfect. to, to come up with one number. Got it. William Whitmer to be followed by Dennis Riley. Uh, William Whitmer, City of West Hollywood. So uh, section four awards points for industry knowledge, bar restaurant experience, cannabis experience. Um, what sort of documentation would even remotely suffice for you know, 10 plus years of cannabis experience? Could you just speak a little louder? Um, like it. what kind of documentation would you know, suffice for 10 years of cannabis experience? Again, a, a narrative ex explaining Just what you've done. It's we, we assume you're telling the truth. So, okay. great. To Thank tell, you. you know, these are being reviewed by people who don't know you. So, you know, you want your experience to, to show through. Okay. Thank you. And you will also be signing a document that says everything in the application is truthful. Dennis Riley to be followed by Roger Corn or Kern. Hi, Dennis Riley, West Hollywood. Um, what if any information in the application is going to become public information? And is there a process to redact any sensitive information? During the screening process, the applications are likely not public records under the Public Records Act. Once the process is complete, they very well may be subject to disclosure under the Public Records Act. Um, there's specific exclusions, they're not confidential. Uh, we'll just put that out there. There are certain um, exclusions in the Public Records Act that allow proprietary and trade secret information to be redacted, but the exceptions under the Public Records Act are, are pretty narrow, so everyone should have that in mind when they, when they submit. Roger Kern, Corn, to be followed by Jackie Green. Roger Kern, and uh, I'd like to know the screening committee, I don't expect the names, but uh, wh what background do they have? Are these city employees or these experts from the outside? John, you want to tell them? So I can give a general kind of overview of the application committee, and we will be releasing the names um, at a future date so that you know who to not contact. Um, <laughs> 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 they are not city employees. They are independent individuals, um, most that do not have any interest, business interest in West Hollywood. Um, there's an individual who has um, good knowledge of the city. There's individuals that have extensive knowledge in cannabis, in the drafting of Prop 64, in the social equity components of Prop 64. Um, there are people with design and architecture experience with business experience regarding the entertainment industry, but also um, the cannabis industry. And there are also people with um, local government experience and helping other communities throughout the state draft their cannabis ordinances, as well as their weighting and scoring criteria. Um, all the individuals have some specific knowledge, but in general, they're knowledgeable of the cannabis industry and of business um, and of the things that we've put in here. So while someone might have specific experience, they are well qualified to review all of the applications. Very good, and thank you. Thank you. Jackie Green to be followed by Ron Electria. Thank you very much, Jackie Green here. My question is, uh, will the reviews be done in a manner in which the applicants' identities are not revealed to the reviewers? In other words, a blind review process. That wasn't part of the proposal. I think the names and company names and everything are, are part, of, part of the application. So we were not planning on doing it blind. Okay. And I can add to that that if there is specific language in the agreement that all of the application committee members are signing that if they have a conflict of interest, if they know someone, they are, going to, um, they are not going to score that person's application. And then, they, so let's say someone of the five knows that applicant. Then the other four would score that application, and then those four would be average. That's one of the reasons we're doing the averaging. Thank you very much.
Ron Electri to be followed by David Dickerson. I know it's a tough last name. Alex Harry. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Under the experience, it says uh, previous adult use, retail, or medical use dispensary that was subject to state cannabis regulation. Does that mean state cannabis regulation starting this January 1st under Proposition 64, or does it mean under SB 420 and Prop 215? Does that make sense? It means any cannabis experience. So it could be under the medical marijuana program, it could be out of state, any, it's just a state cannabis experience. Got it. And if or a similarly, similarly state regulated activity. Okay, if we're operating could be out of state. or working at a collective in LA under the state SB 420 and Prop 215 rules, but we are not a pre-ICO, does that count as regulated experience? <laughs> Say it one more time. Okay. <laughs> if we're operating or working at a collective in LA under the state SB 420 and Prop 215 rules, but we are not a pre-ICO, does that count as regulated experience? Meaning you, didn't, you don't have a local permit, but you're just operating in compliance with state law, is that? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we'll talk about that offline. Okay. Okay, and we'd ask that you turn off all electronic devices. Uh, hello, hello. We ask that you turn off all electronic devices and that you don't yell out questions from the audience. Everybody's gonna have a time to speak at the counter. So I think the answer to that question was we need to look into that further and we will provide clarification. On some of the very technical questions, we'll just have to get back to you so that we give you the right answer. David Dickerson to be followed. Oh, sorry, okay. Thank you. Do you have another question you would like to ask? No, it's okay. Okay. Buck Angel to be followed by Max Tesliavich. And if your question has already been answered, but you'd like to ask a different one, you can do that. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, my question is, uh, how come there's not more inclusive uh, language around LGBTQ community? I see one thing that says LGBT in the whole application. And I'm pretty concerned about that, this being a LGBTQ city and uh, I think you've seen me speak here before. I'm very, very concerned with the fact that I think that that social equity should be more prominent within the application. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a qu my question is why is it not? I stumped them. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think the, the point of the meeting today is to ask um, specific questions about how to comply. I, I hear your concern, I understand your concern, we're still finalizing the criteria, so point taken and heard. Okay, okay, right on, thank you. And part of this comes into that we are looking for unique businesses that understand West Hollywood. And so certainly a business that understands the LGBT community in the city, that will come out in the application, I would hope. And if that comes out in the application, I think you will be scored better in terms of the connection and understanding of the city when it's being reviewed. So sometimes there's not specific items in the weighting criteria that calls out specific things, but your knowledge of the city and your understanding of the city will make your application better. Max Tesliavich to be followed by Leon Mostavoy. Good afternoon, Max Selvich, I'm with the Dr. LA. I have a question. Is there opposition to licensing additional entities? And if so, will this committee have anything to do with considering such opposition from community or other businesses? Well, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? So is there currently opposition of any sort from the community to licensing additional entities? And if so, will this committee have anything to do with such opposition? Uh, I, I'm not familiar with any. I think the community has been pretty supportive of this of this whole process. Okay, it's just, uh, there, are you, there. Are you asking if we're gonna license more than the number that we're already applying, accepted applications for? Um, no, I'm asking if, um, say that you guys approve uh, a license uh, for a consumption lounge. Is there currently already opposition to, to, to opening new places, new locations? And if so, will this committee will have anything to do with if, that? If somebody has opposition to a consumption lounge where, lounge where it's going to be located, the, the process for that would be during the business license commission hearing. Okay. They can speak during that hearing of, of 
you know, let him put another against it. Thank you for the answer to my question. Leon Mostavoy to be followed by Courtney Carone. Hello, thank you. You did a great job with my last name. Um, Leon Mostavoy, Wings of Wellness and Pride Wellness. You just heard from one of the co-founders, uh, Buck Angel. So both being transsexual, Ben, we won't go over the, over the LGBT thing again um, because I think you did your job with that, thank you. Um, because we did notice that it only rated about 20 points, mm -hmm. so which did not seem a lot. But the other thing I wanted to mention, owning a delivery service that's been in operation, and a wholesale company that's been in operation for a couple of years, but not necessarily, we're in Hollywood and we're in Claremont, but you, you are saying that that will also weigh in, even though we know the laws have changed in the last couple of months, but the fact that we have owned and operated legally up until the laws changed in January, that's something else that is going to weigh in heavily on your application, so we can use that. We wanna know experience. We wanna know that you're familiar with the cannabis industry and state regulation and things of that nature. Right, and then the one more thing, because we do have a give back program for the uh, uh, senior center department at the at the uh, West Hollywood LGBT Center, huh? things like that, all of that weighs in. We yes. just kind of throw that all in there. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Courtney Carone to be followed by Kara Smith. Courtney Carone, Adam at Law Group. I was just curious if there's a tie with applications, how the committee's going to handle breaking a tie. So with, <laughs> with, with a five-person scoring committee, we anticipate that they will review and score and then discuss. And so we're, we're actually not anticipating many ties because they can discuss, this, this is a group, and they can discuss their rankings and, and maybe provide insight to each other and, and try and come up with um, a number that doesn't result in a tie. If in the, you know, after all kinds of you know, discussion, deliberation. There actually is two businesses that receive the exact same number. We will come up with some way of chance, a random way of chance flipping a coin or, or something to break that. But we're really not anticipating a tie because we think these um, experts can, um, can reevaluate and, and come up with, with a consensus. Kara Smith to be followed by Austin H, I believe. Hi, Kara Smith from We Can. And she actually just asked my question, but my second question was um, in regards to pulling um, products from small <coughs> cannabis producers and the benefits of that, especially when we have an established uh, company that does offer um, seed to sell production, um, would pulling from the larger company um, be a disadvantage as far as the city wanting to pull from smaller producers? I think from a pure math situation, there's nothing that takes away points. There's only categories that So if we didn't points. currently have uh, uh, relationships with small producers, that would be a negative then because we don't have the... Well, you, you wouldn't be eligible for the three points, but also remember it's 200 points, so it's it's three out of 200, it's a, it's a small number. Okay. John, do you have anything to add to that? Um, not no. necessarily, that <coughs> item is in there because one of the key provisions in Prop 64 and one of the key provisions in the legalization of cannabis in the state was to not disadvantage um, small growers in the state and we are encouraging people through those three points to purchase from small growers in the state that may be driven out of business by larger producers. Okay, thank you. Austin H. To be followed by Matt Marcote. Hi, Austin Shu, Craft Canada. Um, yeah, I appreciate the thorough uh, points that you have, the 200 points. But I was worried about how much does it depend on past experience and how much does it depend on future projection of uh, what's, you know, proposed. Because um, what I, you know, concerns me was the, uh, for example, like say the security or even the traceability, you know, so anyone can really go to say like uh, BioTrack and have a pristine 100% or you call any security company and does cannabis and they can answer those questions perfectly, you know, so I'm just saying 
if it's on proposed theoreticals, everyone would really, you know, it's pretty much you can Google the 100%, you know, theoretical, what they would do. Mm -hmm. Can I have my answer that, Lauren? Well, the, the experience category is ranges from 20 to 25 points of the 200. The business plan ranges from 90 to 105. So the, the business plan, what, what you intend to do here, is a much larger percentage of the numbers. Right, it's, but I'm saying, like, say, like, for security, you mm -hmm. know, where you said, like, how you want to do armor transport and such like that, or say, like, um, for traceability, you know, like, uh, like, like over here, we use, I mean, we use biotrack. that. What you put in your application, if you're selected, uh -huh. will be carried forward to the Business License Commission. You'll be expected to operate in that manner. Right, but I'm just saying, like, um, answering those bullet points, um, you can, you know, say someone with no experience, they can just basically, you know, Google and get the same, you know, perfect answers as someone who has experience with. And they will be required to do that in their license. So that's if, if, if they're saying that, they will be required to do it, so. Right, so my point is I'm saying like, you know, theoretically everyone can get like 100% on, like really high points on those. I, 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 I doubt that everybody will get the full amount of points there. There is subjectivity to it. The quality and detail of the plan, the nuances of the plan are also important. So okay. just listing off, few sentence answers in bullet point form probably is not going to be the best for you. You need to give detail. You need to show that you understand uh -huh. how to securely operate the business. Okay. And then does uh, past experience count toward points for there's that? An experience. There's, there's an experience category in there for people that are drafting the security plan. Okay. Thank you. And then there's also an additional five points at the end for the quality and thoughtfulness of the application materials. So it all kind of okay. builds on each other. Okay. Thank you. Next is Matt. Marcotti to be followed by Edgar Calaton. Sorry for butchering people's names. Hi, um, this should be a quick one. I just want to know where manufacturing cultivation as ancillary uses fit into the, ap the application process as far as, as scoring and, and receiving <laughs> a local approval for that. They're part of, first and foremost, your business model, because that's telling us what you're going to do. Uh, I mean, I think I think if you're going to have ancillary uses, it, it kind of fits into the entire business plan. I agree. It's part one, of what you're doing. It's, we want the, we want to know it all. We want to understand the full scope. Absolutely. One of the con one of the concerns is that um, there's a space limitation, and so yes, if you're doing a retail area, you have a, a limited to 50 pages of text. If you want to add manufacturing, that's starting to pull away from the quality of your application. And I was wondering if more space would be allocated if you are doing one of those ancillary uses. No, it's, it's 50 pages of text total for each license type. And, and you, so manufacturing as an ancillary use would have to be taking away from the retail application space? It, it's part of your operations, so it should be weaved in through most of your operations plan because it's part of what you do. It's, All right. it's a part of your concept and your plan, so I would highlight it more in the concept of the business that you're going to be doing more than just retail on site and okay, kind of great. integrate that in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. Edgar to be followed by Aaron Hertzberg. Good afternoon, thank you, Edgar Claudia. And more of a comment as opposed to a question. Uh, I think staff has done an incredible job of, of showing social equity through the point system, except frankly in one category where uh, there's five points given for an existing West Hollywood cannabis business. I think I've heard a lot of wanting a diverse pool of operators. Frankly, there's only been a handful uh, that have followed rules and procedures in the city. So I think it puts folks who have not operated at a disadvantage, so certainly from a social equity perspective, if we want to be equal uh, throughout the line. Because I think experience outside of West Hollywood uh, would not count towards that five points, which is frankly two and a half percent of the, the process. Thank you. Aaron Hertzberg to be followed by David. He's passing. Oh, sorry. David, I can't read the last name from Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> to be followed by Raza Lawrence. Sorry, David. David Kaufman. <laughs> uh, quick question around social equity. Uh, there's a mention of veterans, folks who are harmed by the drug war, folks from the LGBT community. Are women included in that group as well, or are they not included? They are included in that group as well. It was just a few examples. <laughs> 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 
Raza Lawrence to be followed by Joanna Lacalis. Good afternoon, Raza Lawrence, City of Los Angeles. My question relates to the experience category section four and the number of years experience in a regulated industry. My question is what if it's a new entity that's applying but the people involved in that entity have experience and does it, would it need to in that case be the owners who have the experience or would an employee or contractor who's part of the team uh, count towards the prior experience? We're changing the language where it said majority owner on the draft to applicant. So who is the applicant? So, so the issue is to say the applicant is a new LLC, but it's composed of people who themselves right, have Right, they're people who make up the LLC. So would, would, it, would it count if people who work for the LLC are employees and they have the experience, do they need to be the owners of the new entity? Are they going to be part of the day-to-day -day operations? Okay, if so, if they're part of the day-to-day -day operations, as long as the individuals within the entity have experience. I don't want to go back and forth in this public in this public meeting, but um, there's got to be an individual listed on the application as the applicant. It's okay. Jeff, that's correct, right? We have individuals listed on our business license applications as the applicant. That's correct. There's an so there's going to be a, there's going to be a person owner. that you yeah. have to list, and we want to know that person, and if there's additional experience on your team, put it in there. Okay, thank you. Joanna Lakellis <laughs> to be followed by Sean Maddox. Hi, Joanna Lakelsey with Pink Dot. Um, I was wondering about delivery specifically. I noticed in the um, medical use dispensary section of the ordinance, it states delivery of cannabis from medical use dispensaries to customers in West Hollywood and surrounding areas is permitted. Um, I'm wondering generally what are delivery locations that are in West Hollywood, wh where exactly are they allowed to deliver? Anywhere. Anywhere. If you're located, if you, this is to regulate the location where your headquarters are, where you're storing it, where your call center is, where your drivers come back to, that's what we're, that's what so we're the licenses at. located within West Hollywood yes. are not bound just to deliver well, within West Hollywood. Our, Correct. Our, our permit allows you to locate in West Hollywood and deliver in West Hollywood. If LA is requiring a separate permit to deliver into LA, you would need to get that. If another city is not allowing delivery into that city or requires a permit, you would have to get that. We are just, we can only create regulations for our city. Okay. And but you could, if you got a permit from somewhere else, you could take it outside of this. Right. City. Great. And along those same lines, if you're applying for um, a dispensary permit and a delivery permit, let's say you don't get the dispensary permit, what are the storage rules for product for use in the delivery business? I mean, can, can that be stored in any secure non-walk-in area? You, um, it's, it's at your location. It's up to 75% of the location can be used for storage. So she's saying if she only gets a delivery license. She only gets she a delivery get license, she would have to have a physical location within the city. It doesn't have to be a retail storefront. It could be an Anywhere office building. It. It, it could be where it's allowed. So it would need to be in a commercial zone, and then you could store products there. Okay, great. Thank you. Sean Maddox to be followed by Adam Gilman. Hi, uh, Sean Maddox. Um, my question is relating to the operating procedures portions of the application. Mm -hmm. uh, in the ordinance, there are certain requirements of operators that aren't reflected in the ranking criteria, such as customer and patient screening. I'm wondering whether or not those processes are expected as part of the application or if there's something that are going to be left towards the business application later on. Are you talking about 570020C? In the new ordinance? Possibly. You don't know. I don't have the so ordinance in front So what of we tried to do, in the original ordinance, we cleaned up, as I mentioned, last week. And what we tried to do was clarify the difference between the screening application, the zone clearance application, and then what you submit if you're one of the top eight for the business license. And I think what you're referring to is when you actually go to the business license. I think so, too. Right, thank mm -hmm. you. Adam Gilman should be followed by Ann Chi Su. Hi, Adam Gilman, uh, CEO and co-founder of Field. Uh, we have uh, been operating in the state of Colorado for the past four years, California for past three. Uh, I want to reiterate, thank you guys so much for organizing this. It's, it makes the process very transparent and really helpful, so thank you. 
Um, somebody made a comment on this subject, but I'm going to press a little bit further and ask a specific question. So holding that you guys believe that there is going to be enough subjectivity with the scoring of these applications that you don't think it's going to be a t very tight race, I happen to adamantly disagree with that. If you look at how many people are here, um, it's, it's likely going to be highly competitive. And let's just acknowledge that there's a possibility it's going to be very tight. Mm -hmm. Combining that with the notion that we actually had a meeting upstairs a few months ago prior to this um, where it became a topic of discussion for about 20 minutes, this notion of bonus points to existing West Hollywood cannabis businesses and the fact that every group can apply for every category. I was making the argument that you're effectively giving these four businesses four of the licenses and there's only going to be four left afterwards. And my specific question is, and, and by the way, I believe there was a response from the city which stated that it was going to apply to medical only. At the time, I thought, oh, that means it only applies to their application for medical dispensaries. I never thought that it meant only medical cannabis businesses would be getting bonus points in every other category. So my question for you guys is, acknowledging that there's a possibility, right, that it can be a very tight race, um, what options do we have at this point to change that portion of the scoring criteria? Because this is a draft, correct? It is it's a draft, and it hasn't been finalized you yet. You understand so the point that I I'm understand making. completely. So five points is 2.5%, right? I was part of the application for City of Long Beach. I'm not sure if any of you guys are familiar with what happened there, but call the city attorney, and he'll tell you all the lawsuits he has. Um, a ton of people got perfect scores, and it was a very complex application, arguably more complex than this one. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I, I, I think that this is going to end up being a situation where, based on the volume of applications, how much money and resources are going to be put on this city. Um, it's going to be a shining light for the cannabis industry throughout the world, arguably, um, that you guys aren't looking at this properly. And I, th I really urge you to reconsider, and I want to know how we can make sure that happens. Point. So, Point. so. Thank you for that comment. Um, we don't have a specific answer to that right now. We have to discuss that further. So, so we'll, the, the final scoring I, I, criteria I, is going to be released next week, though, right? Correct. So how can I find out what I can do or anybody else that's interested can do to c cause you guys to reconsider? Because that's not really an answer. No offense. We, we have to internally discuss it. And who do We I understand do? your question. Is somebody going to reach out to me to let me know what your guys' decision was? Because I'm sorry, you're not answering the question. That's why I'm pressing. The question is that internally, staff needs to discuss it. And then I'll find out once you release the final. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. And Chi Su to be followed by Dana B. Okay. Dana B. Be followed by Catherine Chu. Dana B. <laughs> so, I'm Dana B. My question has to do with delivery. Um, we're going for delivery only. My partner is also an equity applicant for San Francisco and getting a delivery license there. I would hate to get a license here and hold it from other businesses. I'm personally not a capitalist. <laughs> um, I, a couple months ago, I remember reading on your site, you were going to give unlimited delivery permits for delivery services operating outside of West Hollywood. Is that going to be for just this window, or will that always be open for applicants? Okay, sweet. That's always open. It's so what we're, the eight licenses here are for when your location, your headquarters are in West Hollywood for um, locations outside of the city in order to deliver into West Hollywood customers you, you need, need a business one. license to do that. Um, and you'll need a permit from West Hollywood to deliver. Okay. Into the Just city, clarifying. yes. Kathina mm -hmm. <laughs> Syra to be followed by Azaria Amafle. Kathina Sear. Um, my question is, what type of license would I apply for if my business is to buy product either from a manufacturer or dispensary and then turn around and want to deliver that um, in in-home parties and then sell them. 
I don't know the answer to that. I'll have to, I'll have to look into that. Okay, all right. We can post the answer to that. We just need to look into it. Azaria Amoufle, to be followed by David Osborne. Hello, my name is Azaria. I'm with Ash Society. Um, I did have an original question, but that got answered, so I'm just going to quickly get through a couple others off today's conversations. Um, it did say that you guys would allow, once someone's been awarded the license, about a year time period. Coming from another regulated market, there's a flux of applications that in Oregon alone, even though there's no barriers to the market, as long as your com building's compliant and zoned properly, paperwork's done, you get a license they're still nine months out in that. And this is a market that's been stabilized over a couple years now. So understanding that you, as soon as you guys give a license, you have to also take into effect the state's queue of the application process. And maybe consider if their application um, has been accepted and they get put in the queue, maybe there's an exception to that year period, but it's really gonna depend on you know, the amount of applications statewide. The year is to get our license. Once you get our license, and you take our license to the state. Okay. So, so there was, so you, you have a year, once you're selected as one of the top eight applicants in the category, you have a year to obtain a business location and get the city's business license. So what you're planning on is that by that time that that person will receive that, hopefully the queues are smaller for the state. Well, for the state, there's, you, you just have a year to receive our city license. There's no, once you get our city license, you hold that city license. Okay. And however so, long it takes to get the state license, that is, there's, there's no limitation on that. Okay, then that was a misunderstanding, so I apologize for that. I'm glad you cleared that up. The second question I had was, um, let's say someone gets uh, one, of, uh, one of the awarded licenses, and then for um, some reason they fall into problems and they can't pursue it. Is there going to be a line of queue um, of the highest ranked applications that are going to be able to take, go into the next place available? Or would those pe uh, a license application um, process open again and then people have to resubmit? How would that work if someone can't follow through with that award? The ordinance says that if there's a, a vacancy in one of the licenses, the application period will open up again. So if everyone no would wait list. have We're to not, do it again all over? Yeah, the city manager would, would start the process all over again. Okay. Um, we're not, we're not going to maintain a wait list from these existing applications. All right, good to know. Thank you. David Osborne to be followed by Sapphire Blackwood. Good afternoon. My name is David Osborne. So we're looking at doing cannabis-infused food uh, for on-site consumption, and obviously we need to get approval through the city of West Hollywood. Uh, through our analysis, we believe we also have to get approval through the health department and the uh, California Department of Public Health. And my question relates to have you, you know, what sort of coordination have you done with the uh, county health department and the Department of Public Health, uh, and if you haven't done any, uh, are, you anticipating that the applicants will have to independently go through each one of those regulatory schemes and independently get approval from each one of those regulatory agencies? Yes to both questions. Yes, each applicant for um, cannabis ingestion lounge will have to go through all the, get all their required permits from the health department, the state, the city. I'm gonna let Jackie speak to meetings she's had with the county health department and other entities. We've met with the LA County Health Department to begin the process of talking about um, you know, consumption, but as you may be aware, the LA County Health Department has not finalized its rules yet, and they will, they're not expected to be completed until June of this year. So at this point, we've just had preliminary meetings to talk about the requirements of our ordinance, but beyond that, we, can't have, we have not had more substantive uh, discussions because they're still working through their regulations. Through their but they're familiar, they have a copy of our ordinance, and and they know the process that we're going through, so they're taking that into consideration as they work on their regulations. So they're well aware of your process. Great. Yeah. How about the California Department of Public Health? Have you had any coordination or communication with them regarding your ordinance? Just in general, I mean, you know, they have a copy of our ordinance and they're aware of the process that we're going through, especially the consumption lounges. But beyond that, I mean, again, they're still going through, you know, finalizing their regulations. So at this point, it's still on a preliminary um, basis. Okay. Great, 
Thank you. Sapphire Blackwood to be followed by Scott M. Immure. Hi, um, I have a parking question, and I'm, I'm sorry I haven't looked through your parking code, but um, it's 3.5 spaces per thousand square feet. Well, if, um, say, you don't have a building yet and you don't know what your building will look like, are you allowed to have a mutual, shared mutual access agreement with somebody nearby? And if so, how many feet away does it have to be? I'm sure you can have parking arrangements with people nearby. Again, the final details on the actual physical location is after you go through the process and get your license from the Business License Commission, and then you come to the city to get your any necessary planning permits or building permits. So if it turns out that you pick a location and you need more parking that's, then that's provided on site, Depending on the location, you might be able to use parking credits in which you buy a parking space. There might be provisions where you do a parking use permit where you secure parking on another property, generally within 400 feet or so. Okay, thank you. Scott Emmer to be followed by Lauren Fontaine. Good afternoon, thank you. My name is Scott Emmer. Um, I'm a co-author of Proposition 215 and the founder of the Los Angeles Cannabis Resource Center, which was West Hollywood's first mm -hmm. cannabis center that opened right after the election. Uh, all of this new structure is new for us. We were uh, set up as a nonprofit cooperative. Uh, all of those provisions and mechanisms have been shut down at this point by the state legislature in their what we consider misinterpretation of the, of the law, Proposition 215. The gentleman mentioned lawsuits coming from uh, the regulatory process in Long Beach. Um, I would suggest that there will also be suits coming forward based on the denial of the basic proprietary rights that were granted to patients by Proposition 215 22 years ago. And, um, it seems to me that, um, well, I'll, I'll keep my political opinions aside, uh, just sharing that. But as trying to reopen the LACRC after it was operating for five years and then was closed down by the Bush administration mm -hmm. six weeks after 9-11, um, we're struggling to figure out how we do this outside of the cooperative structure, which is no longer allowed outside of a nonprofit structure, which is no longer allowed. Um, so my question is, um, coming to the gate here, $10,000 basically to file the application, is that refundable if you don't get a license? No, because it reimburses the city its time for doing this whole screening process. Lauren Fontaine to be followed by Patrick Fogarty. So we're trying to come up with our business model for the application and we wanted some clarification on the rules for consumption of food. So I was wondering if the same restrictions in the state law for edibles apply, for example, the 10 milligram THC per serving and the limitations on not having dairy or meat or products that need to be refrigerated. Our local License is not, does not include any of those requirements. If, if there's applicable state law requirements, you would have to comply with that when you get your state license, but our ordinance does not go into that much detail. Okay, so you're assuming that we would still have to comply with the state law and your ordinance doesn't speak to that specifically. Mm -hmm. And then if you had a delivery license and also the consumption license, then would you be able to deliver the food that you prepare at your location? That is a good question. I don't think we've thought of that. We haven't, we can, we can look we'll into that. We'll look into that, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Haven't considered that. Okay, thank you. Patrick Fogarty to be followed by Tracy Passo. Hello, uh, Patrick Fogarty. Hi. Um, so my question is in regards to 
the, the addition of the source of items produced, uh, infused items produced on site for consumption lounges. Uh, specifically in the, the weighting criteria, there's one point allocated to SOPs falling in line with state regulations. And I was wondering if the consumption lounge uh, that, that is applying shows that it, its SOPs are in line with state regulations since items that are infused and produced on site are not, would not be in line with state testing and packaging regulations. If the consumption lounge that's applying would then, that if their SOPs do uh, fall in line with state regulations, would they receive that point and vice versa would other SOPs that don't fall in line with those not receive that point, if that makes sense. Can you say that one more time? Part, yeah, sorry, it's a <laughs> little confusing. So there's, uh, there's, there's one point allocated to uh, your SOPs being in line with state regulations. For testing? For the consumption Are you talking lounge. about the testing? Yes, right? yes, okay. for testing. Um, and in regards to that single point, would a consumption lounge that's applying, if their SOPs are in line with state regulations, um, would they receive that point? And then other, if again, if your SOPs are producing the infused items on site, that's not in line with state testing and packaging regulations. So would they, that then lose that point? And you can I don't want to make a determination whether that's in line with state law or, or not, uh, because that's really a question for the state to answer, okay. not for us. Um, but so I don't, I don't know that we can answer that question here for you, Dave, because that's kind of a legal question as to whether or not the testing, at what point the testing has to happen under state law. Of course. Okay. And then um, do you think that you'll be able to look into that and then post the answer to that question? To the extent it doesn't require us to provide legal advice or, uh, okay. you know, make a legal conclusion. Perhaps. We can provide as much information as we can. We will look at it and try okay. to provide additional information. That's great. Thank you. Tracy Passo to be followed by Julian Brand. Good afternoon. Tracy Passo from the West Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. I have a, a question on behalf of one of our members regarding uh, delivery. Um, are there any requirements for outside-in deliveries that go beyond the state requirements? Uh, are they concerned about a specific re requirement? I, uh, I believe the concern is that the requirements may differ. The city may make different requirements than the state is currently uh, requiring for the inside-out deliveries. You know, I don't remember off the top of my head because we wrote it last fall, which, okay. which ones are local and go above and beyond, but um, all of the requirements for delivery are listed in 570.042, all of the operating requirements. Okay, great, thank you. So it's, uh, I would suggest they review both our regulations and the state regulations and compare them. Yes, because I okay, don't... thank you, they have both. Julian Brand to be followed by Rye Pritchard. Ju okay. Rye Pritchard to be followed by Larry Block. Hi. Hi. My name is Rye Pritchard. Um, I had a question whether uh, in the city of West Hollywood if vaping is considered differently than smoking in regards to the consumption lounges? No. No? No. Okay. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> There's a, there are eight consumption lounge licenses that include uh, smoking, vaping, and edibles, and there are eight separate ones that are just edibles. Larry Block. Larry Block, West Hollywood. Uh, can a person have a minority interest in more than one application, that are different applicants, but a minority local interest in, you know, and conversely, can an uh, applicant who has a supply chain also be duplicitous to another application that might be applying who's, say, a grower? I think people can be involved probably in, in multiple business. That's what you're asking, can people yeah. be involved in multiple businesses? In the same category, the restriction within the same category, one applicant 
You know, we, we would have to look at each individual one on a case-by-case -case basis because we said we don't want one, I'm going to use this word loosely, company coming in and taking multiple um, licenses from the same category, but we understand that there might be some people who are involved at varying levels at different businesses. So we would have to answer that on a case-by-case -case basis. But the applicant is an individual or can be a corporation? Yes, but there has to be some a person who does the background check and who um, some of the questions on an application are related to an individual. And so there has to be a person named. It's the main person. The main person. So you could have more than one interest in more than one application as a minority person. Yes. Yes. OK. Yeah. So that concludes our questions. Um, we have with us Councilmember Lindsay Horvath. So I'm going to let Lindsay say a couple of quick things if she would like to. You want to use the microphone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, take this. I heard there was a thing happening. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to come and say hello. Um, but I, I just want to say thank you all for coming and taking the time to ask questions to help inform our process. I know many of you have been in, uh, participating in our process over many months already, helping to inform our ordinance and helping to inform the choices that we're making as a community. This is a whole new industry, as we all know, and it's a new venture um, for many people coming in, uh, who want to come into this city. So we uh, certainly don't expect that we're going to uh, understand understand or get understand every aspect or get everything exactly right on the first try um, and that's why we uh, made some restrictions in, in terms of the types of licenses and the kinds of operations uh, we expect to have in the city um, so uh, I, I appreciate all the questions and just from the the few that I've heard so far it's clear uh, you're really thinking about this from every angle uh, but please know that our staff has been working tirelessly I don't know any effort that we've done in recent history in the city that has uh, required them to go to the lengths that they have. So um, I'm sure that as you're trying to get every question uh, answered and understand this issue from every single angle possible, uh, they're trying to do the same thing. And so in some ways, we're kind of all in this together. Um, I, I can only speak for myself, not our entire council, but I do know that um, we, in our effort to craft this ordinance, we tried to be as inclusive and forward thinking as possible while also managing how much we, you know, we start out with so we don't bite off more than we can chew um, and, and hopefully safely and, and um, fairly grow this industry, uh, no pun intended, uh, in our community to everyone's benefit. We understand that you want to bring your business here and we want businesses that come here to really understand the rules and be successful, but we also want our community to thrive as a result of this thriving economy too. And so I know a lot of you have approached me in particular about uh, social equity plans and, and how we've and having that conversation in the community and I appreciate you bringing those things forward because that certainly reflects our community values um, but as we move forward in this process I'm sure there will be uh, more questions than our staff is immediately available to answer but rest assured we are uh, uncovering every stone that we possibly can. We've invited the governor's office uh, to the city and actually his staff has directly met with our staff to take a look at what's been going on in the city already and understand what's happening here in our community. Um, so we're in very close communication with the state, um, which is very important. That's the basis for the law, as I'm sure you've all come to understand here here in uh, West Hollywood. Um, but thank you for bringing forward your questions. I'm sure they've also advised you um, about how the process will go in terms of who you can communicate with or not communicate with. Um, I've shared per, uh, before that I will personally be disclosing uh, publicly if you reach out to me to try and ask questions. That's not to discourage you. It's just to assure everyone who doesn't ask me a question that I, I'm being fair and transparent with who's reaching out to me to be um, clear about who's communicating, because I know that there, there have been some questions about how things have rolled out in other cities. We aren't those other cities. We're West Hollywood. We're doing our best to try and get this right, and with your input, I think we're going to get there. So thank you very much for your active participation um, and for your interest in bringing your business to our city, and um, in whatever way possible, we look forward to working with you. Thank you.
well done. That's not easy. I, uh, I live up in